each of these three fish catches. There's one. Gosh. No. Oh, got him. Oh gosh, that one feels big. Was made possible because of a quick change I made to my lure. Can you guess what it is? In today's video, I'm gonna teach you guys a simple hack for your spinner baits and your chatter baits that if applied correctly, will lead you to catch more fish, whether you're fishing from the bank or in a bass boat. My name's Tyler and let's talk about it. Another giant, another giant. Look at that y'all. I can't believe what I just caught. Yes! Well, what's going on folks? And welcome to TRF. My goal here on this channel is to help you guys become better anglers and catch more fish. So if you're all about that, you found the right channel. Now, when it comes to reaction type lures, your swim jigs, your swim baits, and of course your vibrating jigs and your spinner baits, there is a simple hack, an easy to understand rule that will get you in the position to catch more fish and will save you more money. Now, money is contained in a wallet. This video is brought to you by the Ridge Wallet. I have had a Ridge Wallet for over two years and I stinking love this thing. It is slim, it is durable, it has some awesome colors, 30 of them to be exact. The one that I have right here is called Mount Rainer. It is an awesome topographic color pattern. If you like to hunt or just be in the outdoors, the Real Tree Wallet is sick. This wallet holds up to 12 full-size cards in here with room on the back for cash and still doesn't feel bulky in your pocket. If you don't trust me, the wallet has 50,000 five-star reviews on their website and a 45-day money-back guarantee. So if for some reason you don't like it, you can return it, but trust me, you're gonna love this thing. If you wanna update your wallet from being an old-fashioned, thick, clunky wallet to the new Ridge, you can use code TRF to save 10% on your order. Thank you to Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. I am pumped about this content because I think it'll really help you guys catch more fish on your spinnerbaits and chatterbaits. Let's get back into it. Now, before I teach you guys the hack for the spinnerbaits and the chatterbaits, we first have to go over what the intended purpose is of a moving bait. If you're casting your spinnerbaits and chatterbaits out there, letting them hit the bottom and then hopping them like a worm, uh, you're not doing it right. I'm not gonna say that a bass will never bite a lure retrieved that way, but as the name implies, it is a moving bait. It should be moving through the water column from your cast back to you at some speed level. How deep should we be moving our baits? Uh, like I said, I'm talking about spinner baits and chatter baits in today's video. Should we be, you know, bouncing them across the bottom and hitting rocks and sticks as we retrieve them back to us? Or should it be in the middle of the water column? Or maybe should our spinner baits, chatter baits be all the way up at the top, basically breaking in the surface? The answer? Yes. Let me explain why. In order for a moving bait to be most effective, you want the bait to be as close to the eyes of the bass as you can. So bass have the eyes on the top of their head, and so if you are retrieving your bait, your moving bait, underneath them, Again, I'm not saying that can't work, but it's gonna be a lot less effective because the bass has to then move its body to find that thing. If you retrieve above its head, above its eyes, your chances of getting that fish to bite are much, much higher. Regardless of how deep you're fishing, you want your reaction baits, your moving baits, to be at the level or just above the level of the bass's eyes. Yeah, you see, Tyler, I'm confused now because I don't know how to get my spinner jig to sink, sink down in the water, be, you know, certain water depth. You talk about like feet of water and stuff. Uh, how am I supposed to know how deep my lure is and how am I supposed to keep it there? Because I, if, I, if I get real excited, I'm gonna start speeding up my retrieve and who knows how shallow my lure is gonna get. And so how do you, how do you keep the bait? in this strike zone, if that, you know what I'm saying? Well, Redneck Tyler, that is a fantastic question, which brings us to today's hack for the spinner baits and the chatter baits. And that is learning how to adjust your lure weight and your retrieve speed for every fishing situation. Let's hop on the front deck and show you exactly how to do this in practice. Now, because a spinner bait and a chatter bait do not have any kind of bill that gets the bait down to a certain depth, like a crankbait or a jerkbait do, your speed of retrieve actually has a ton to do with how deep your bait is in the water column. To demonstrate that, I have a half ounce chatterbait right here. And to help prove my point, I've got my other camera here set up on my live scope transducer down here, my front facing fish finder. And what this is gonna show is that with the same exact weight vibrating jig, a half ounce tungsten thunder cricket, at three different retrieve speeds, you're gonna see three different depths in the water column. So let's back up here, make sure we got a good shade on the screen, make a cast out there about I don't know, 55 feet, you see the lure fall in there. Let's let it fall to eight feet and then start my extra slow retrieve. So this retrieve here is just fast enough to get that blade turning and you'll see it's sitting down there in eight feet. Matter of fact, it's kind of fallen in the water column, eight and a half feet. And of course, the closer I get to the boat, the more it's going to start rising up in the water column. So that was my first cast and retrieve at extra slow. Let's make the same exact cast, 55 feet. 
let it sink down to eight feet, and then let's do just kind of a, a normal retrieve. As you can see, the bait right there is sitting in about six feet of water. And this is kind of my average retrieve speed for a vibrating jig. So now we're gonna do an extra fast retrieve. As you can see, it's fallen right there, eight feet, and we're gonna start burning it. As you can see by the trail there, it is already up in four and a half feet of water. Now, almost four feet of water into three feet of water and we are back to the boat. So hopefully that showed you guys using the same weighted lure at three different retrieve speeds gives you three separate outcomes in terms of how high in the water column that bait is brought back to your boat, your kayak, or to the bank. It is very important to learn how to vary your retrieve speed. Now, as you all saw, the deepest I could get my vibrating jig while retrieving it at the slowest retrieve was maybe nine feet of water and vice versa. The shallowest I could get it with the super fast retrieve was maybe three feet of water. But let's say you're fishing really shallow a grass flat and you still want to throw a spinnerbait or a chatterbait ultra shallow or you want to absolutely creep that thing down there in even deeper water than what this bait can get at that point you actually have to change the weight of your lure not the retrieve speed to get it into a certain water depth let me show you how to do this in practice so right here i've got two different weighted spinnerbaits this one here is kind of a classic half ounce you know double willow leaf blade spinnerbait and this one here is also a double willow leaf but it's quite a bit heavier i think it's a three quarter ounce spinner bait. Now to keep this test as even as possible, both of these bait casters have the same exact pound test line and the same exact gear ratio. Both are seven, five to one. So I'm going to make one cast with each to show you that weight also has an effect on how deep the bait is retrieved back to you. So first the half ounce spinner bait. I'm going to make the same distance cast I did with the chatter bait, about 55 feet. You see it falling right there just before 60. Let it get down to eight feet of water, and then I'm gonna retrieve it at a speed that I kind of consider a little bit slower than average, kind of one turn every second. And as you can see, it's kind of staying around that seven and a half, seven feet of water right there. Of course, the closer it gets to me, the higher up in the column it gets, but it kind of stayed around that seven and a half feet of water range. So now put the half ounce down and grab the three quarter ounce. Let's make the same cast and try our best to do the same exact retrieve. It's falling right, it's falling way faster. And all right, one, two, three. As you can see, man, it is already at 10 feet of water. I feel like I'm retrieving it just the same. Matter of fact, I'll speed it up a little bit and it's still down there in 10 feet of water. So that's almost a three foot difference in water depth in the retrieve between two different weighted spinner baits on the same combos using the same exact retrieve speed. So I'm sure at this point, there's probably a little bit of confusion out there. You know, deciphering, is my spinner bait or chatter bait too heavy or too light? Am I reeling it too slow or too fast? It's also confusing. Check out this graph that I made that I think will help clarify things a little bit. As you'll see on the X axis is lure weight going from left to right, from heaviest to lightest. And on the Y axis is retrieve speed, on the bottom being slowest and on the top being fastest. And the line on the graph depicts the depth your lure is being retrieved in, farthest on the left being the deepest and farthest on the right being the shallowest. Putting a point right here on the graph would depict a heavy moving bait retrieved at a slow speed and thus it is deep in the water column. And putting a point here on the graph depicts the exact opposite. A very light weight lure at a very fast retrieve rate gets that thing high up in the water column. I'm definitely not the best at math or statistics, but this graph seems to make sense to me. So here are some practical ways that I like to select my moving baits for different water conditions. It's getting windy, uh-oh. <laughs> We're gonna sit down here in the bottom of the boat to finish the video because it's too windy up there. If the water is really clear, I prefer to throw the lightest lure that I can get away with and the slowest retrieve speed to give the fish the best look possible. So let's say it's a pond or a lake with aquatic vegetation and really clear water. I will hardly ever go above a half ounce in both a spinnerbait and a vibrating jig. And if I need to get it deeper, I will retrieve that thing extra, extra slow. But one thing about the spinnerbait and the chatterbait is that if you retrieve it too slow, the bait does not act in the way it was designed to. So the blades cannot actually turn and the, the blade on the vibrating jig cannot actually vibrate. And so there is kind of a floor in terms of the speed of retrieve with a vibrating jig and a spinnerbait that you can't really go below. And on the flip side, if the water is really 
dirty and shallow, I prefer to throw a half ounce or above and retrieve it really, really fast. I've just found that in dirty water, giving a fish a faster retrieve allows them to have something to react to. And in dirty water, they can't hardly see it anyway. So a reaction strike is really what you're going for. But of course, there are some situations in which the grass is really, really shallow or I'm fishing around uh, boat docks or really shallow wood where I need like a quarter ounce spinnerbait, a three eighths ounce vibrating jig. And so I pick up those baits to make sure my bait stays above the eyes of the bass and in the strike zone. There's one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh my gosh. We found the absolute mother load here. Oh, this is awesome. This fish might go four pounds. Oh, he's got a weird sore on his back. Yeah, yeah, weird looking fish. He's got some kind of like fungus growth on his face. Ugh, and my bait's in it. Oh, yuck. It's like full of pus. I don't want to touch him. Almost a four pounder, but he's got something weird growing on the top of his face. Ugh. Don't want to touch that. Now there may be somebody watching this video right now that has never caught a fish on a vibrating jig or just doesn't have confidence in it. If that is you, I will leave a video up here in the corner where I go into masterclass detail about the vibrating jig, also known as the chatterbait, to help you guys catch more fish. My name is Tyler and we'll see you guys over on that video.